This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work, responding to another Ask Prof. Wolf question from our Patreon community. This question comes from Katz and from France, where Katz is located. And it has to do with political issues inside France. But once again, while I'm flattered to be asked, I am responding because these questions go far beyond France. They are relevant all over uh, the world and therefore have a double importance. Uh, and that's why I'm responding to them. Katz points out that in France, there's a kind of split on, on the left. On the one hand, there are those who are associated with the older tradition from the 19th century that is gathered around the philosopher and writer of that time, Pierre-Joseph Proudhon. And the other side of that split is usually associated with Marx. When you come right down to the present, because this split and the debates between them have gone on from the 19th century right up to the present, today uh, the split is represented, says Katz, by on the one hand, Michel Onfray, uh, a writer on the left in France, and on the other by Jean-Luc Mélenchon, uh, the leader of what is now a unified left effort in the French elections and in French politics in general. French politics now resembling Australia and other places where you have roughly one-third conservative, roughly one-third left of center, and then one-third far left, with a smattering of others, including the right wing. And the question that is being asked here is whether we at Democracy at Work, and I in particular, favor the bottom-up Proudhon build co-ops from below approach to left politics, or the way Katz puts it, the Marxian Mélenchon grab the state top down kind of approach to left politics. Sometimes this has been called the anarchist, and Proudhon was often thought of that way, versus the Marxist. And Marx was often thought as an advocate of the state being a powerful player. And indeed, many Marxists believed that. But I want to be very clear here that I reject and would advise others to reject the dichotomy, the either or of all of this. My understanding and what I would advocate is that we need both. We don't need an either or. We need bottom up, but we also have to understand the power of the state. In other words, you might say with the anarchists, ultimately, we don't need or want a state over us. But to get to that point needs a series of steps that include, among others, seizing the state so it cannot any longer function as the executive committee of the ruling class of capitalists, which it has been performing right up to our time in a pretty harsh and unfortunately successful way. So yes, build from below, absolutely. The anarchist impulse to build at the base is a good one. Part of the reason it's good is that it is a control on those who are going to be seizing the state or trying to, that if they succeed, they don't go off and become, as some called it in the 20th century, a new class of those who have seized the state, who leave it at that and never use the state, as was Marx's original idea, to make the transition beyond capitalism. How do you make sure that the state, if you can seize it with revolution, with electoral strategies, however that is accomplished, to make sure that seizing the step that the state is just a step in a social transformation, you need to have the pressure from below, from the mass of people. 
to make sure that transition remains the top priority of a government that has been, in some sense, grasped by the mass of people. And the way to do that, I would argue, is to democratize the state. You have to understand both building the base from below to control the strategy and the long-term process and the mechanisms of seizing and using the state. You know, Proudhonists and Marxists had a different reaction to the very first time that they were able to seize the state. And that time was the Paris Commune of 1871, when there was a vacuum at the top, the state collapsed, and the people of Paris rose up and seized the state. As Marx, who was alive at the time, commented and wrote about it, both then and in the years afterwards, they did not know how to use the state to move the transition along. The people who seized it didn't know, and there wasn't the base below strong enough, self-conscious enough to make it happen. That's what has to be learned. Let's stop the debate either or. That's not productive. It's been going on a long time. Let's understand that the crucial question is how to do the two things together. Mobilize to seize state power and mobilize to democratize the workplace so that these two aspects of social change fertilize, reinforce, and teach each other to make the change finally happen. If interventions like these strike you as useful in the times we live in, please partner with us to help us show them, share them with family, friends, co-workers, and so on. And of course, if you can help us financially to pay the costs of doing this, that too will be appreciated. Thank you.